As a product designer, you're going to be making a lot of design decisions, but one of the most important parts is how to explain your rationale. Hey friend, it's good to see you back here. If you're new though, I'm Femke and I'm a product designer and today we're gonna tackle writing design rationale. As a designer, you might find yourself in situations where you have to explain your rationale. People are gonna be wondering, how did you come to this decision or this final outcome? What were the inputs and the decisions that you made that kind of led to this final solution? Now, one place where it's really important to include rationale is your case studies in your portfolio. The other important place to include them is when you're talking to your stakeholders. Maybe it's through a design review or you're sending out an update. This is also a really, really key place to be prepared to write your rationale. So let's talk a little bit about how to approach writing or explaining your design rationale in both of these situations. Now, before we dive into case studies, let's just take a moment to do a bit of a refresher on what the key areas of a case study are. Now, I believe that the first section of your case study should be the background context. Now, here you wanna set a little bit of the tone as to who you were working for at the time, what your role was within this project, maybe the year that this project was developed, just a little bit of context so that the reader can get to know kind of the story of where you were and what was going on at the time of this project. The next key area is the problem statement. Now in this area, you really want to go a little bit deep into what was the key or core problem that you were trying to solve. And now I've talked a little bit in previous videos about how to make sure you're writing a clear problem statement and not writing a solution because that's gonna come later in the case study. The next section is research and insights. So what kind of research did you do in this project? Did you run some user interviews? Did you do a little bit of uh, competitor research and analysis? How did you get insights that led to ultimately the outcome of the project? Next is exploration. So here you wanna go really, really wide, Feel free to show lightweight sketches, some wireframes, all the different things that you explored, and then following with refinement. Ending, of course, with the final solution. So what was the final outcome, the output of the project? Here's where you wanna put all those flashy, high fidelity designs. Maybe you have some interactive prototypes or a screen recording of how the experience actually works. This is where you kind of explain the final solution. So with those key areas outlined, you may be wondering, where in this case study do I talk about my rationale? And well, the answer is everywhere. Rationale should be sprinkled all throughout your case study. I like to think of a case study as telling a story and you can't tell a story without including the rationale of how you got from A to B. So I often try to include rationale at all points throughout the case study, wherever and whenever a decision is made. I'm often more interested in the story the rationale, the design decisions that you made and how you actually got to the final solution rather than what the final solution is in itself. So any opportunity you have to kind of drive home that rationale, I'm gonna really be looking out for those throughout your case study. Every time you write in your case study, I think this, we did this, we decided to do this. As the reader, I'm gonna be thinking, why? Why did you think this? Why did you decide to do this? Why did you take this direction? So these are all key opportunities to insert your rationale. Now, if you really wanna make your rationale stand out, one way you could do this is pulling out the rationale into key sort of block quotes throughout your case study. This kind of helps break up the visual presentation of the case study. And if I'm sort of skimming it and not reading it fully in detail, these key block quotes will draw in my attention and I'll quickly get an understanding for some of the key decisions that were made throughout the project. Another tip is to not underestimate annotations to your work. Every time you're showing a screenshot or a visual or an exploration, then feel free to include annotations underneath the image to kind of explain what the image is showing. And if there was a key design decision that was driving the output of that, whatever you're showing, that design exploration, then include that underneath. This really helps give me context as to what I'm looking at. And again, is another great opportunity to explain the rationale behind the visual that I'm looking at. You should be bringing up rationale each time a key decision is made or a new direction is chosen. Now, when each of these two things happen, I really wanna know how this came about and why you decided to do this. Was it because there was a constraint in engineering that led you to choose this direction? Was there a change in uh, goals from product? 
Whenever those decisions are made or a direction is chosen, give context as to how that came about and how that influenced your design. Now, when in doubt, rationale should always be tied back to one of these two points. Either you can relate it back to a key problem that you were trying to solve or back to the research insights. For example, maybe you had three explorations and ideas as to how to solve a problem and you found that exploration two just solved that problem the best. Then tell me that that's why you chose to move forward with exploration two. This often means that sometimes you will be making trade-offs and that's just part of being a designer. I often have to let go of ideas that I initially really liked or thought would be the best solution. But when I started stress testing it against the core problem we were trying to solve, I would find that maybe it just wasn't working as well as some of the other ideas. So this is part of being a designer too, is knowing when to let go, knowing how to choose the best exploration forward. And a lot of this often comes back to the core problem or need that you're trying to solve. Now, if you're relating it back to the research, then pull out key insights that help influence this decision. It's really impactful when you tie key findings or insights to a design decision that was made. This also kind of helps thread the whole story together. So if you remember, we talk about research and insights near the beginning of the case study. And then when it comes to refinement and final solution, this is a great place to bring those insights back into your case study and talk about how that influenced the final outcome. If it makes sense, then always tie your design decisions to either insights, research, maybe you got something from data science that influenced your decision, any pain points or core needs or problems that you're solving, or even user stories if that's what influenced your design decision. So let's talk now a little bit about rationale when it comes to sharing your ideas with stakeholders, presenting your designs in design reviews, because that's a bit of a different ball game than case studies where you often get a little bit more time to refine and craft a narrative. As a designer day to day, sometimes I'm put on the spot and have to explain my rationale in front of a stakeholder. So let's spend a minute to talk a little bit about that. So you should always know why you made a certain decision. And if you are presenting your work in a design review, it's really, really important to make sure that you begin the review with everybody getting on the same page. So I often like to set up a few slides in Figma that kind of explains the background context to the work that I'm about to present. And then also if necessary, include a little bit of rationale. I've been in reviews before where we end the review with a very, very convincing argument as to something that we should change. But then I go away to my desk, try implementing that change and realize that it doesn't work. So when I come to my next design review, I really, really have to be ready to have that rationale and show and tell the story of, look, where we ended last time, I took that on board, I tried it, I, I massaged it, I tried to work it into the design, but realized that it wasn't the right way forward. And now you want to be really, really prepared to explain why you don't want to move forward with that decision. This is where I rely a little bit on slides to sort of talk through that rationale and show how I tried it and how I got to where I actually propose we should move forward. Another way to approach this is to show the different explorations and iterations that you did, maybe with some annotations underneath. I've sometimes drawn out some pros and cons lists under different concepts, and this can really help to kind of bring everyone together on the same page of moving forward with the direction that you think is best. Now, another pro tip here is that you should also be applying these concepts, not just when you're presenting your work, but also if you're sharing your work, maybe through email or through chat or another kind of format, just be prepared to always kind of have that rationale ready to go. It's going to really help get everybody on the same page, understand the problem you're trying to solve and kind of get up to speed with the decisions that you've worked through to get to this point. And that will really help people focus on the work that you're putting forward and give everybody that kind of lens to give feedback or comments, knowing that you've done all this exploration, you've made all these decisions, and then this is the concept we're focusing on to move forward. Right, hopefully you found this helpful and you're ready to go back to work and tell everybody about your rationale and the decisions behind your designs. Thanks friend for tuning in. I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.